Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is um, December 26, 2016. This week I want to talk to you about setting goals for your heart. I've been participating in a goal setting exercise for 2017 and I've also been dabbling with uh, business coaching. Uh, it's buildingakingdomcompany.com with a guy named Larry Nault. I'm really high on both and I've noticed something missing in my heart. Goal setting is usually built around how to get something and the requirement is, you know, what should I do? What information do I need to learn? Um, what's, the, what's the right attitude I need to have? And uh, different ways I need to behave. It's all focused on my attitudes and my actions. Now, the reality of kingdom is that our assignments are normally beyond our own strength. Half of the equation is learning how to receive from God, not just learning how to get. Um, <clears throat> so, in fact, the things we do get come from a foundation of knowing how to receive first. See, it's not grace or works. It's not grace versus works. Kingdom is always both. Uh, first, it's receiving, then giving. First, it's identity, then calling. First, it's ministry and vocation. That, that stuff comes second. The, first, we're commissioned, then we're sent. Listen to Matthew 10, verse 8. Freely you have received, freely give. In Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is with, at work within us. So what we need to tap, more important than the recipe for goal setting or what you need to do next or time management or all that stuff, is how do you release his power in us? That's the goal. <laughs> so I want to suggest that uh, <clears throat> when we think about going to the next level, most of us have a pretty good idea of what we should be doing and the results that it should produce. What we're missing is how to walk with our Father and receive the part that we can't produce on our own. Life and success are never defined or produced by a set of principles alone, whether they're spiritual or practical. We're always uh, changed and promoted by an experience of the heart. Mental knowledge is necessary and good. Um, that's the what of goals. But wisdom belongs to the heart and tells us why. And that why is always rooted in an experience uh, of your heart. Okay. So listen to Proverbs 2 verse 10. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. So it takes both. Both knowledge and wisdom. Both mind and heart. So without knowing the why is is the reason goal setting usually fails and fails to touch our hearts. Knowing the why or wisdom is always the foundation for doing the what or knowledge. Regardless of what we think our hearts are driving the bus, when we make decisions it's it's always swayed by what's in our heart, the, the, the thing that's written in our hearts by experience. So let's talk about experiences of the heart. The why in our hearts doesn't get there via information. Now, you might think you'll get a college education, you'll have all the right heart attitudes. It's not true. Um, our hearts learn from experiences. So what experiences are we talking about? That's the most important question of goal setting. The experiences that redirect our lives are nearly always encounters with our Father that reveal something of His heart. So let's be specific in three areas. First one I call permission. One of the first experiences is having permission to pursue the desires of your own hearts. It's premised upon the experience of knowing that God put those desires in our hearts and that they are shared in His heart. Now that's not something you can teach or imagine or fabricate. That's an experience when, when that revelation sets into your heart. So reading the information that the kingdom of God is within us is one thing. But knowing that his desires for the kingdom already reside in our hearts is an experience, and it liberates us forever. And um, so the second one is, once you have that experience that you realize his desires are written in your heart, the second one is co-laboring. So this experience is the sense of working with our Father. The things we do can be immeasurably beyond our own abilities because his power is at work within us. And that's an unmistakable experience. <laughs> we operate in a measure of his power and authority working with us, and we call that anointing. 
it feels like being carried or empowered, and it works in business just as well as, as it does in church. And it changes our identity to son and then king. And we feel included in a great army building this kingdom right now. We're not waiting for heaven. We're not waiting for breakthroughs anymore. We've got an assignment. And we're engaged in that personal assignment centered around the desires of our heart. Yet we have this personal awareness that they're also the desires on the Father's heart. And I want to suggest that's the recipe, that's the formula, that's the secret that makes dreams come true. When my heart is aligned with my Father's heart, and we both share the same uh, desires, the same dream. So the third aspect of this whole trilogy is, is love. The third experience is that once we enter the love of being chosen by God for ourselves, that's when we start co-laboring with the Father and, and feel His anointing to do immeasurably more than what we can do in the natural, that's, that, experiences, that experience is, feels like being chosen by God, and it feels like being loved. It feels, it feels like God loves us when that happens. And we're always able to see other people in the light of their calling. So once I understand my calling and how much God loves me, then it's an easy next step for me to, see, to love other people and to see their calling and, and to help them realize it. They, they will not experience love. Uh, they will always experience love when we are prophetically, when we prophetically touch their call and they love us back. Even when people are broken and fighting against God, the experience we have is the awareness of their calling and a love that chooses them just like God chose us. Isn't that amazing? That experience of being able to love people premised on their just their calling, just, just the anointing that they carry in their hearts because God has already written. When you can see that, uh, that's, a, that's a breakthrough. So here's your assignment. <clears throat> when we review our lives and think about goals, it's wisdom to have the right balance of external goals and internal experiences. The biggest question we all face is, what's the next hard experience that God has for me to release a new level of grace and power? God is searching to find and promote people who share His heart. It's a level beyond trying to implement principles or ideas with goals. We share His why because we've experienced it in our hearts. Listen to um, 1 Samuel 13, 14. I'll read you two verses about David. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people. That, that uh, dynamic works exactly the same for you and I. And in Acts 13, 22, like 1,500 years after David uh, died, maybe it was a couple thousand, <laughs> I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. So I put a graphic in the newsletter and I've uh, got some additional information in there and I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, let me read you the last paragraph. Uh, People who are connected with their own hearts are successful in business and life and relationships. Great accomplishments are, per are preceded by connected hearts and motivated people who are doing what they naturally enjoy. Fulfilling a kingdom destiny because they've tapped into the reason they are here. Their work is worship and their accomplishments are crowns laid at the feet of Jesus. They is us. We're destined for something great, each one of us. And that means you. There's a kingdom destiny written in your heart right now. And if you allow the Lord to show it to you, He will. And it's exciting. It's, it's what causes us to have passion and enthusiasm for life. And it's what causes us to tap into his kingdom and really be effective. Have a great week. A Merry Christmas. God bless.